Good evening everyone and welcome to Gundam News and this week we've got some really cool updates so let's get right into it. In July we're getting the high grade Universal Century Nightingale for a whopping 7,000 yen before taxes. And while you might think that well it's a pretty big mobile suit so it requires a pretty big price tag to match Keep in mind that the RE100 only sets you back 8,800 yen. So I really wonder how they're going to offset this price difference. It does look like it'll be more articulated, relatively speaking, because let's face it, no matter what they do, it's still going to be a mobile brick. And we're also getting the sub arms, which we didn't get with the RE100, which is a nice addition. And it'll also have a much easier time holding on to that giant gun thanks to the fixed high-grade hands. So while it might not be the biggest Nightingale out there, it might also not be the best bang for your buck, but I do feel that for the time being, it will end up being the best Nightingale we can get. Also in July, we're getting the SD Gundam X Standard Wing Gundam Zero for 660 yen, and if you really want to, the backpack uses the same kind of universal pegs that many of the 144 scale high grades use. So if you really want to, you can slap it on there. There's also the SDW Heroes Chow Wing Gundam Holy Costume for 880 yen and well, fair enough, it does look like a fusion of the Wing Gundam with a video game priest who then decided to pick up a very fancy looking sword. And talking about fancy, if you want to make your model kits a little bit fancier, we're also getting a bunch of water slide decals for 550 yen or 5 buckaroos a piece. There will be the general purpose H slide, a general purpose high grade Hathaway's flash slide, a general purpose the origin slide, a general purpose build diver slide, a slide specific for the real great new Gundam, and one specific for the real great Sazabi. In August then for 3520 yen, we're getting the kit that I'm the most curious about on how it's going to turn out. The figure rise standard seed Lacus Klein, cause well, the experiences I've had with humanoid figures from Bandai is um, mixed, shall I say. So even though the promotional images might look somewhat promising, I'm going to be careful as usual. But hey, if they do get it right this time, they'll immediately have their head for all other Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny figures. The benefits of the Hirai face. Accessories include different facial expressions, different hands, two type of her favorite Haro Pink Chan, and to really sell you this figure, there is the Plamo exclusive short skirt version. Because Bandai knew that was really going to be the push that we all needed to rush out and buy this figure. In the same month then, we're getting the SDW Heroes Arsene Gundam, or as I'm going to call him, Phantom Thief Gundam X. And it'll set you back 660 yen or around $6. For $14 then, you can get the SDW Heroes Goku Impulse Gundam DS set with the Sha Sheng silhouette or the Zhu Bai Jie silhouette. Quickly moving on to September, we're getting the one that I'm personally the most excited about in this episode of Gundam News, and that is the real great high new Gundam for 4,950 yen. And man, this is a beautifully chonky redesign of the high new Gundam. And well, I say redesign, but it's actually more of a return to the original design because the later redesigns made him a little bit less chonky as opposed to this extra thick high new Gundam. 
it's like putting Merriweather in charge of the design. And despite all of its bulk, it's still going to have some pretty damn good articulation, complete with armor separation gimmicks. And as long as the inner frame can support this beast of a model kit, I have no doubt it's going to be one of my favorite model kits this year. Fans of the Berde Buster then can also rejoice in September because they're getting a deluxe version of the Sergeant Berde Buster Gundam, which comes with the Sarge himself, power loader parts, handgun, handcuffs, a shield, and extra option parts for the Berde Buster Trooper, an elite police officer which is of course available separately in the same month for 660 yen. It also comes with a handgun, baton, shield and handcuffs and can use the aforementioned reinforcement part so you can upgrade its feet or have it do aerial insertions with the usual police lights included. Well, they're not actually going to light up but you know what I mean. If I was more into SD Gundam, I would have actually considered getting my own little police squadron of these, but as you can probably guess, all of my available funds are currently going to army building the regular sized grunts. And then finally, there is the SDW Heroes Nobunaga Gundam Epion Dark Mask version for 770 yen. Over at P Bandai then, orders opened up not just for the Doppelhorn and Multi-Launcher pack, but also for the inevitable Neo Custom Windham. Other than the very cool color scheme that they for some reason felt the need to ruin with that neon green in it, this kit will be identical to the regular release. So for the people who like painting their model kits, just skip out on this one and grab the normal release instead. The Doppelhorn and Multi-Launcher pack then will retail for 1,650 yen, around $15, and will of course include the Doppelhorn and Multi-Launcher pack, but also a pair of stiletto armor penetrators that I'm quite happy about because I was sad that they didn't include them with either the Wyndham or the Dagger and then we're also getting a slide of marking water slide decals. My only complaint about this set, other than it being P. Bandai of course, is that the rather giant missiles aren't quite color accurate which they could have easily done. Now, normally I wouldn't really have noticed missiles being the wrong color, but you know, the thing is in Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny, the nukes are quite prominently featured, so I'm very familiar with the orange and uh, the gray that should be on the tip. Also, a quick correction for last week, I said that they should have been up for pre-order on the 10th, but the source I got this from had misread or misinterpreted the original announcement, so I went back to double check and the post from Bandai said that the pre-order date and also the date with more information was to be announced at a later date. And the 10th was actually the release date of the dagger itself. So with the gun plot announcements out of the way, let's move on to the action figure announcements. For 550 yen a piece, or 5,500 yen for the whole set, around 50 US, we can get the 14th lineup of the Gundam G frame in August. And the theme this time around is decidedly Blue Destiny. We've got Blue Destiny Unit 1, a freed Kai, Gym Command Space Type, and just because they could, the Blitz Gundam. Each is of course available as two sets, the armor set with a fixed frame and the moving frame set which also comes with weapons and other accessories. And to be honest, I'm really starting to get mixed feelings about their tendency of including just a random figure into their lineups which is also a thing they really like doing with Gashapon lineups. Anyways, the Gym Command is a pretty cool set which isn't as random as you might think, because by including the ground type backpack, the bullpup machine gun and also the normal shield, you can replicate the gym commands that we see and play as in the Blue Destiny video game. And it goes without saying that all of the figures are nicely detailed and also for added value, we get a piece of chewing gum with each one of them. 
To complete the Blue Destiny lineup then, there is the G-Frame X04 set, which includes Blue Destiny Unit 2, Blue Destiny Unit 3, and a bunch of extra goodies. In addition to the usual stuff, they also come with a custom action base, the manga exclusive weapons, stolen and non-stolen shoulders for Unit 2, and it even comes with the exclusive, well, with the manga exclusive head for your Unit 1 with both a normal and exam system version. And all of this will only set you back 3,960 yen in August as well. And if you're still unconvinced, it also comes with a piece of chewing gum. In September then, we're getting the sixth lineup for the Gundam Universe action figures, and for 3,300 yen, around 30 US, we can get a Freedom Gundam whose wings are too short, reminding me of those sad old high grades or 1-100 scales from the past, which is not a good thing in case anyone's wondering about that. We can get an Exia Gundam whose proportions look completely out of whack, or we can get the Heavy Arms Gundam, which looks perfect in my opinion. I might actually get one just to have it like hanging around on my desk to play around with it a little bit in case I need a quick break from work. Or I could just read through Mika Akitaka's MS Girl Note, which will be releasing on August 27th for around $40. And I'll of course have to grab a copy of this amazing looking art book by the leading figure of the Mecha Plus Bishoujo genre. Their words, not mine. Not that I disagree. I mean, just look at those amazing designs. And it's not just mobile suit girls either. He's even got some sweet redesigns of mobile armors as well. Fortunately, the book will be a normal release, but if you order through P-Bandai, you'll get a bonus postcard. Pfft. What kind of idiot would get suckered in by that? I got a binder for mine. And before I forget, we also got the finalized images and details for the GMG Federation soldiers. But it's not really anything we didn't know already. They'll be releasing sometime next week for 4,378 yen apiece, around $40 for a relatively small figure, and each will come with his or her own accessories. Also, whereas the GI Zeeks came with a part of a mounted machine gun, the combined parts of the FETs will form a cozy campfire. So if you only get one of them, at the very least the added bonus parts that are supposed to combine with the other figures aren't completely useless. Like, Nod Bride comes with food, perfectly usable, the Big Bone Dude comes with some mags, yes, that includes a pinup culture mag, and the girl comes with the campfire and a giant empty shell, so perfectly usable on their own. On to the stuff we could get this week then. For 17,380 yen, 150 US roundabouts, there was the High Great Universal Century Xi Gundam vs Penelope Funnel Missile Effect Set, which is exactly what it says on the box. It's the Xi Gundam and the Penelope Gundam with an extra sturdy clear action base each, and then a bunch of extra yellow effect parts. If you already have the Penelope Gundam and you don't really care for the effect parts either, you could just buy the XE Gundam on its own, still for a quite significant 6,600 yen, $60, but for that price it does transform into flying mode. Wow! At least it is quite a chonky machine for that price, but I'm also not sure how much more chonky it's going to be than, for example, the real great high new Gundam, which might end up being chonkier than you'd expect because it's rocking those enormous wing binders. On top of that, it's also cheaper and it's also real great instead of a high grade, so I do feel like the price is quite high on this high grade Universal Century. Moving along, for fans of the SD Gundam kids then, it was the usual, these previously released kits are somehow listed amongst the new releases. We got the Yan Huang Zhang Fei God Gundam, or the Da 
Kiao Gundam Artemy slash Xiao Kiao GN Archer for 770 yen. And just look at how adorable they are. And then for 880 yen each, we got the Wu Sheng Guang Yu Yun Chang New Gundam and the Long Qian Liu Bei Unicorn Gundam. And if you feel like top coding any of them, you could get the clear gloss and clear matte Gundam markers shipped to you starting yesterday. And I decided to pick up the clear matte marker from Hobby Link Japan, so I'm curious to see how that marker is going to work out. In other news then, the Gundam Factory Yokohama has won the Excellence Award at the 26th AMD Awards. And no, not the graphics card company. The Association of Media in Digital, who grants this award to creators or groups for their achievements in promoting digital media. And just as I said with the last award that they won, if a giant moving 18 meter tall mech isn't enough to win you the prize. I really don't know what is. And then starting April the 29th, Hathaway's Flash has a collaboration with Rinku Premium Outlets in their Osaka Bay facing seaside area. Various picture taking stands are placed across the area, so you can take pictures that are reminiscent of the movie. Just imagine how that collaboration came to be. The Rinku folks calling up the Gundam folks being like, yo, our area kinda looks like areas from your movie. Let's collab. And then the Gundam dude on the other side is like, uh, yeah, sure, that sounds about right. He hangs up, turns to his colleague and is like, what the hell is a Riku? And then they just figure something out because honestly, I think Gundam will do collaborations with anyone. They're like Evangelion. If you contact them to do a collaboration, you've got a name, they'll do it. Um, as for this week's Gundam apparel, it's based on the one, the only, the undefeated of the East, Master Asia. There's a white or black t-shirt for 4,180 yen each, a track jacket for 16,500 yen, track pants for 13,200 yen, one of those traditional Chinese shirts for 16,500 yen, and of course, as always, a keychain, this time in rubber, available in two patterns, and 1,100 yen each. And starting today, they'll be available either from Strict G's online store or their brick and mortar stores. So, Gundam fight all set, ready, go! And I think that is the perfect way to end this week's Gundam news. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam news.